Hello everyone, this is uh, Pastor Brian Shilton uh, here at home, in my home studio, I guess you'd say. Uh, and uh, this is normally uh, how I bring forth the weekly podcasts uh, with my microphone here. And so I uh, want to thank uh, those who've uh, helped me uh, be able to, to increase the quality of the podcasts. But uh, today here I'm with you on YouTube, and you may be wondering, well, why are you doing this this way? Didn't you record the uh, Bible study from last night on November 11th at Huntsville Baptist Church? And the answer is yes, indeed I did. Uh, However, we had a wonderful time sharing testimonies, and um, people were very personal in some of the things they said. And, And due to that, uh, in fact, one one individual especially shared some some um, intimate things that probably don't need to be broadcasted. So uh, we're going to hold off on uh, posting that uh, particular video. I tried to edit that video down um, so that we could uh, present the video. We had technical. I had technical difficulties trying to get that to work. So what I'm going to do to, for you, uh, for you, the next few moments, is I'm going to kind of give you a recap about what we discussed uh, at our last Bible study, and we went over the tenth discipline, the tenth spiritual discipline, which is that of worship, and we titled the uh, Bible study "Loving God by Giving Him Praise." And so, uh, in this in this study, we just looked at uh, a few different things. Uh, for instance, we looked. We will look at. Um, let's see if we can get this to work. Uh, we're going to look. We looked at uh, the definition of worship, and in fact, that's what we're going to do in this uh, on this broadcast today. We're going to look at the definition of worship. Why it is we worship? Uh, how do we worship? What's the focus of our worship? the danger of a failed worship, and then uh, some things, I'm going to give you some things that uh, you probably need to think about as we move forward uh, in the study. So first and foremost, what is worship? The term worship comes from the Saxon term weorthsype, uh, which was later, which later evolved into the term worthship, worth ship something meaning that someone was worthy to be praised the hebrew terms throughout the old testament uh, demonstrate different ways in which a person can uh, sh- can worship god for instance the uh, term kerob uh, was used of worship as one broad an offering to god so one way you can worship god this lets us know is by by bringing your tithes and offerings unto the Lord. That is a way we can worship the Lord by um, by giving an offering unto God. Uh, the next term is the word hewa, which was used of worship by describing an inner attitude of reverence before the Creator. You've heard of people being God fearing Christians. Uh, or God-fearing individuals, and that's what that means. It doesn't mean it's a fear where uh, necessarily someone is frightened uh, or anything of the sort, but it's more of a fear of a reverence, a reverential fear uh, that someone has. So uh, the word room is one used of uh, a person lifting up or exalting God with praise. And so uh, that shows us another way that we can worship by lifting up the name of God in praise. The word halal uh, describes uh, the act of celebrating God. And I used the illustration the other night that uh, when we come to worship, sometimes we think we have to be very melancholic. We have to be very uh, almost depressed when we're singing, saying, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Of course not. There needs to be celebration in our worship because we are celebrating a living God who came to uh, provide us a way into himself that we could have eternal life, saved us from himself. In fact, I saw a a little meme on uh, Facebook where it was saying that God came to uh, save us from himself. Well, that's not the case. God came to save us from our own selves 
uh, to deliver us out of the pit of despair that we find ourselves in as human beings and bring us to the place that God had originally intended us to be. Uh, the another term that's used is the term hallelujah, which means praise God. The term Yah, uh, or Yah is short for Yahweh, uh, which means God, the personal name for God. So hallelujah means to praise God. This praise can involve um, Zamar singing. It also could be described as Abad, serving God. Uh, so those are the ways in the Old Testament that are described as praising God. In the New Testament, we see some similar terms, uh, proskuneo uh, or proskaneo, I'll get that right in a minute, means to bow down in an act of worship. Uh, camp toe references a person kneeling or bowing before one in a higher authority. And so uh, that's another term. Excuse the phone ringing. I meant to hang it off the hook, but uh, we'll just have to go with it uh, with the way it is right now. But anyhow, camp toe references a person kneeling or bowing before one in a higher authority. Uh, Doxazo uh, means to give one worth, praise, or glory. Eulageo uh, mean, is used for praising and or blessing someone or something over uh, a certain issue. So these are terms that are used to uh, indicate the uh, worship that a person should have before God. Uh, so essentially worship means to ascribe worth to someone or something. Uh, and it, it essentially means to ascribe proper worth to God, to magnify the worthiness of God, to praise God for his blessings. By the time I'm, <coughs> excuse me, by the time I am um, uh, recording this video, uh, we are just a few scant weeks away from the Thanksgiving holiday. And Thanksgiving is built upon the, the built upon the premise of Thanksgiving that we should give thanks for the blessings of life. And so many times we take the blessings of life for granted. Uh, the things that God does for us day in and day out, we take those things for granted. So part of praising God, part of giving Him due worship is thanking God for the blessings that He has bestowed upon us. And then also, worship means that we enter into the presence of God in order to demonstrate that He is worth more than any other thing uh, that we know or, or have in our lives. So that's part of what makes worship, worship. Donald S. Whitney shares a story about a sad event in, an event in his childhood on pages 87 and 88 of Spiritual Disciplines for the Christian Life. He tells the story, and I'm assuming that this was in middle school, uh, where he uh, invited some of his dear friends to come over to his house. His mom uh, actually picked them up. I think they came to his house, but anyhow, when they, when they went to this event, they went to a basketball game. He bought them popcorn, drinks, food, all kinds of different things. But when they sat down uh, to watch the basketball game, his friends scattered. They never thanked him for the things that they had done for them. Uh, they didn't thank him at all. In fact, they didn't even show respect into this individual, to Donald S. Whitney. In fact, what they did is they scattered and, and, and stayed with other friends during the duration of the basketball game. And he said that this hurt him and left an indelible mark upon his life. But he says that so often it's the case that we do the same thing to God. God blesses us with multiple things uh, in this life, and so often we treat him as the young children treated Donald Whitney as a young child. So part of worship is giving due thanks to God for the blessings that he has bestowed upon us. So why should we worship? Well, to give God credit. We've, we've spoken some of that about this earlier. Matthew 14, Jesus was uh, being tempted by the devil, and the devil was wanting uh, Jesus to, to bow down and worship him. And Jesus says, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. 
This is something we must remember. We must focus on giving God credit for the things that He has done. Now, He is the Creator. He is the sustainer of all things. God moves in ways that we don't even know that He's moving. There's not a molecule that moves in the universe without God's knowledge of it moving. So, part of worship is acknowledging and giving God due credit for the things that He has done and is doing. Also, worship means to give God thanks. Thanking God for the things that He has done. First Chronicles 16, 8 makes this clear. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the peoples. And beloved, that's what we did last night in our Bible study. Uh, person after person gave thanks unto God for something that God had done unto them. One of the most touching stories of the night came from uh, Bob Legg, who told the story about how he was uh, being a veteran of the Vietnam War, who he came through some phenomenal uh, and very dangerous things while over in the war. He says at the time he was not a believer, but God spared him, uh, and he doesn't he, he doesn't know why. He even said that he doesn't know didn't know why, but he was so thankful for the fact that God had spared him the way he did. Multiple people thanked God for uh, moving in in their families, for giving them a good strong Christian household, a good strong family. Uh, for friends and colleagues who love the Lord and, and who were part of the, the community of faith. Uh, there were many people who thanked God for godly parents, and uh, those are all things that we should thank God for. So, uh, godly spouse uh, and uh, just individuals who've made a difference in their lives. All of us have at least one thing that we can thank God for. And if you don't take anything out of this study, just understand that you need to find something in your life to be thankful for. You have, if you peruse the entirety of your life, I guarantee you, you're going to find something in your life for which you should be thankful. So that's part of worship being thankful for the blessings that God has bestowed upon us. Also, worship is to experience the presence of God. In Acts 2.2, 2, uh, the uh, community of faith came together at the day of Pentecost, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. So, you know, I think even though that was a specialized event in being the day of Pentecost, I don't see any reason whatsoever why we can't be so full of the Holy Spirit that the Spirit comes down and rocks the place where we are, uh, giving Him due worship as we should. Uh, the fact is, is that, that part of worship means that we are experiencing the presence of God. And... Um, some, someone may um, experience God's presence by, by having moments of silence through the worship service. Um, maybe it's through an exuberant call to worship uh, by song. And you know, even through the preaching and teaching of the Word of God, we can worship, which we'll talk about here in a few moments. But uh, part of the aspect of worship, and this is why church attendance is so important, is to experience the presence of God. I've heard people say, well, Pastor Brian, I can experience God. I can worship God on the lake or on the golf course just as well as I can in a, in a sanctuary. And while that's true, the problem is, is that we'll be so distracted by everything else out there that we won't take time to focus in on God. Church attendance is so important, folks, because we need to be among like-minded believers because we're truly a family. And coming together, experiencing the presence of God is a very powerful thing. And I think is a, a picture of heaven, that the heaven we have awaiting for us. So those are some reasons why we should worship. How do we worship? Well, we worship in spirit. 
Uh, Jesus said to the woman at the well, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. We worship by turning our hearts and minds to God. We worship through corporate and private singing, uh, singing hymns unto God, uh, through corporate and private uh, prayer. Th that's very important, that we communicate with God, that we pray to God, and um, that's a very important element of worship as well. Through the preaching and teaching of Scripture. Listen, the by the uh, the the church is founded upon the preaching and teaching of God's holy word. Jesus was a preacher. Jesus was a teacher. Uh, Peter, James, John, the early apostles—they were all preachers and teachers of God's word. So often it's the case that we want to focus on singing and exclude the preaching and teaching of God's word. Listen, singing is important. I've been blessed by singing. I'm not demoting or de demeriting singing. Singing is very important. But it is also important that we are built upon the Word of God, growing in His uh, knowledge, uh, and that happens by the preaching and teaching of God's Holy Word. So the focus of our worship is the next thing we want to look at. Uh, the focus of our worship should not be on material things, but rather on the risen King. A lot of times, churches get so focused on things that don't really matter. For instance, we uh, are focused a lot of times more on whether we uh, see the words of a hymn on the screen or whether we read them from a hymnal. Uh, we are focused on uh, the style of music, uh, contemporary or southern gospel or even bluegrass. Um, we're, we're so focused on all these peripheral issues that we lose focus on what truly matters, and that is Jesus Christ. When we take our eyes off of Him, that's where problems begin to emerge. We need to stay focused upon Him and on the things that He's called us to be, and on the people He's called us to be. Tom Rainer recently on his website called RevitalizedChurches.com listed 25 silly arguments that uh, churches divide over. These are recent things that people have posted on his uh, Twitter account. And one such thing was even... Um, the length of the worship pastor's beard. The, the beard, now I trim mine, I don't know if that matters or not, but listen, hey, why in the world does that matter? There was even uh, one church that was mentioned that uh, had a major uproar over the budget being off by 10 cents. 10 cents. You know how it was settled? Someone finally reached in their pocket and gave a dime to uh, the budget to even out the budget so that the discussion and the problem would, would uh, disperse. I mean, it's, it's silly. It's so silly the things that we get caught up on and make a big, big to-do over. Church is about focusing on God, on our risen King. That's the most important thing, folks. And when we get off from that or get away from that, that's where problems emerge. When we lose our focus on worship, that's when problems happen. James says in James 5, 9, Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. So that's something that I think all of us need to remember uh, as we talk about worship and the importance of worship. Now, we mentioned uh, the 25 problems that happened earlier that Tom Rayner mentioned on his website. And again, I encourage you to go to revitalizedchurches.com and check out his latest article. But there's a danger when we, as the people of God, do not worship as we're supposed to. What happens when we fail to worship is that we start becoming pessimistic in our outlook towards society. We become pessimistic in our outlook towards each other. And when a person becomes pessimistic, that person becomes a grumbler. And a grumbler 
can very well lose the spiritual blessings that God has for that person in his or her life. Let me give you a couple of examples. William Lane Craig uh, on his podcast a uh, about a month ago, I think it was, took some questions uh, from a particular website. Uh, it's a community that I am actually a member of, uh, Christian Apologetics Alliance. And uh, there was one person, I don't know who it was, uh, but he, gave, he asked Dr. Craig, how do you, when sharing your faith, deal with people who just won't listen to you? He said that uh, it almost appears like that people have become like sheep and are like cattle being herded in a certain direction. And Dr. Craig, I think, gave some great advice, and I'm paraphrasing. Uh, go check out his uh, website at reasonablefaith.org, uh, reasonablefaith.org, uh, for his uh, podcasts and responses. He and, and his literature, I highly recommend Dr. Craig's work. Uh, but nonetheless, um, he told this young individual, he said, "Son, you need to go back and uh, get involved in spiritual disciplines." You need to go back and get close to God because you've lost the focus on what this is all about. We're not trying to win arguments. We're trying to win souls. And that is just such a great advice uh, that Dr. Craig gave that young apologist. And I, and I think that's the problem with many of us. We become pessimistic when we fail to worship God as we should because our focus is not on what God can do, our focus is not upon Him, rather it's upon ourselves and it's upon our society, it's upon the things that are going on around us when really we should be focused upon Him. So the Hebrews in the wilderness are a good example of this. Uh, when the Hebrews left Egypt, it should have only taken them 11 days to get to where they were going. Instead, it took them 40 years to get there. Why? Because they failed to give God praise. They failed to give God thanks. Now listen, God is not egotistical that he has to have praise. Worship does pay homage to God, but worship is just as much for us as it is God. Now I'm not saying that we go to church for ourselves. We do that to honor and glorify God. Make no mistake about that. But worship a lot of times is to keep us focused upon Him, to keep us focused upon what God has called us to be and the people to whom God is, uh, and for the mission upon which God has called us to do. So often it's easy for us to get distracted by things of this life. Uh, worship helps us to focus upon what God has for us. Now again, I think God is honored and, and God expects worship because, listen, if you've done something for someone and they don't ever give you thanks uh, for, for what you do to them, are you going to appreciate that person? Well, of course not. Obviously, God has done a lot for us uh, and, and worship is just merely giving Him thanks. Uh, as anyone else would want thanks, I think God wants the thanks that we give to Him uh, because God is a personal God. So again, there's a great problem that comes upon us when we fail to give God homage, to pay God homage, to give Him the worship that He so desires. For instance, again, the Hebrews should have only taken them 11 days to get where they were going. Instead, it took them 40 years. Why? Well, Exodus 15, 24, said, uh, we read, uh, Then the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? In Exodus 16, 8, Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning meat to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Exodus 17, 3, we read, But the people thirsted there for water, and the people grumbled against Moses and said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt? To kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? These folks had seen great miracles of God. You hear a lot of times people say, Well, if only if I could see a miracle. 
then then things would be different. Then I would be different. Well, not really. Uh, these people saw countless miracles, and they still grumbled in their hearts against God. Why? Because they failed to worship Him, to give Him the honor, the glory, and praise that God deserved. Eventually, the Lord grew tired with all this grumbling. Number 17.10, we read, The Lord said to Moses, Put back the staff of Aaron before the testimony to be kept as a sign for the rebels that you may make an end of their grumblings against me, lest they die. No one in that generation made it to the promised land. No one did. Moses was able to see, but because of his rebellion, he was not able to enter in. It was Joshua and the second generation of Hebrews who finally made it into the promised land because they gave God praise. The first generation did not. How do people move from seeing a great miraculous work of God to becoming melancholic grumps? because they failed to worship God. You see, folks, we can be very pessimistic when we look at life around us. We can become very pessimistic when we see society, when we see all the ills of society, when we see everything taking place, and apparently there are a lot of people who were upset at Starbucks for some for red cups i have no clue i don't go to starbucks so i don't i don't have a clue uh some people are, are mad about red cups over christmas time we get so caught up on silly things so many times we do if we want to stay optimistic if we want to stay focused on what god has for us and has planned for us in our lives we need to worship Worship is a very important spiritual discipline that we can do individually and that we can do corporately as a church. So as we close this uh, investigation, this discussion on uh, the spiritual discipline of worship, I, let me give you some questions to ponder. As we close this study today, ask yourself, why is worship important? Also ask yourself, what are specific ways in which you may be able to improve or intensify the way you worship the Lord, both privately and corporately? And also, I want to challenge you, as I challenged the church last night, to think of at least one thing today that you're thankful for. And in fact, to do it even better, from now to the time of Thanksgiving, why don't you think each of each day, think of one thing that you can be thankful for. One thing, one blessing that you have in your life. Friends, I'm going to tell you, it would change your outlook. You would become more optimistic and more thankful and be more prone to worship the living God. Well, this has been Pastor Brian Chilton saying God bless, and we'll see you back next time.